Hello everyone, I am back with a new video. So before I start, please do like, share and subscribe to support the channel. In this video, I will be sharing my on-site interview experience in continuation to my phone screening rounds. The on-site interview was of 4 rounds of 1 hour each. In this video, I will be covering the first 2 rounds. It started off with a discussion on different types of participation in CMOS. I was asked to provide some ways to reduce participation. I provided detailed description about power getting, creating different power domains, clock getting. Then this was followed by specific questions on clock getting, like what is integrated clock getting, how it is implemented, and why we should opt for latch based clock getting. You can expand both the latch based clock getting and the latch free clock getting with the help of a schematic and some waveforms. Moving further, I was asked which tool I used for synthesis. I used design compiler in topographical mode. So based on my response, the interviewer asked uh, like why did I opt for DC topographical over DC? So the prime reason is uh, DC topographical uses TLU plus file, which contains accurate resistance and capacitance information compared to DC, which uses wild load model. So DC topographical provided better correlation with the backend tools. Coming to the next question, I was asked which metal layers you will use for power routing and why. The topmost metal layers should be used as they are wider. Because as you know, resistance is inversely proportional to width. So wider the metal, lesser will be the resistance and the eye drop will be less. I was also asked about the inputs provided to the place and route tool. To which my answer was gate level netlist, constraints file, logical libraries, physical libraries, technology file, file containing the floor plan information and the UPF file. Then I was asked some general questions like what does the technology file contain? What information can you find from the UPF file? What could be the reason for high congestion? How can you reduce congestion issues? After that the interviewer provided a circuit diagram. I don't remember the actual values but clock to queue max and min delay for both the flops were given along with the frequency of operation, setup time, whole time of the flops. The max and min delay for clock buffers as well as the combinational block were also given. I was asked to check if there is any timing violation. So for simplicity, the interviewer asked me to neglect the wire delays. The circuit looked something like this. Plugging in the appropriate values in the setup and hold equation will give you the result. Taking into consideration the worst case for setup, that is the launch clock is arriving late, the data is arriving late, and the capture clock is arriving early. So the worst case setup equation will look something like this. Max delay for clock buffer B1, max delay for clock buffer B2, clock to queue max delay, and max delay for the combinational block. These will comprise the arrival time which should be less than or equal to the required time. In the required time, we have a capture clock gauge minus the launch clock gauge, which is nothing but the time period, plus min delay for the clock buffer B1, min delay for the clock buffer B3, and min delay for the clock buffer B4, minus the setup time. As all the values are given, we can plug in these values, and if the condition satisfies, then there, is, there will be no setup violation. If not, then there is. Similarly, we can do it for the hold as well. The worst case for hold is launch clock is arriving early, data is arriving early, and the capture clock is arriving late. So the equation will be min delay for clock buffer B1 plus min delay for clock buffer B2, clock to queue min delay, and min delay for the combinational block should be greater than equal to max delay for clock buffer B1 plus max delay for clock buffer B3 max delay for clock buffer B4 plus T hold. I was asked some follow-up questions as well. What is clock path pessimism? Why it is added for setup and removed for hold? I use the same numerical to explain the concept. Moving to the next question. Can you explain how crosstalk delay affects timing? Here I explained how the signal transition on the aggressor affects the victim. 
if the signal on both the aggressor and victim are switching in the same direction then the signal on victim will switch quickly which can cause a hold violation while if both of them are switching in the opposite direction then the aggressor will slow the signal transition on the victim and may lead to set a violation on what factors the crosstalk depends my response was the amount of cross coupled capacitance slew rates of the signal transitions and switching direction i was also asked about crosstalk noise and what role does it play so these are some of the questions that were asked in the first two rounds of the on site interview i'll be sharing the questions that were asked in round 3 and round 4 in the next video thank you